As mentioned, my name is Lauren. Welcome to Celebrate Recovery. The purpose of Celebrate Recovery is to allow us to become free from life's hurts, hang-ups, and habits by working through the eight principles of recovery based on the Beatitudes, we can and will be changed. We will begin to experience the true peace and serenity that we have been seeking. Through this program, we will restore and develop stronger relationships with others and God. For those that are new, newcomers, welcome. Um, we're happy that you're here. And this program is designed for newcomers. At one time or another, we were all newcomers. So welcome. Um, a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, restrooms are over this direction. Um, Non-smoking campus. If you need to smoke, that's fine. You just need to exit and go out to the sidewalk. I hope it's not raining and blowing like it was when I got here. Um, please silence your cell phones or turn those off just so we don't interrupt the meeting. Literature table is located over here. Paul's waving his hand over there. We have recovery material over here on the right hand side. Those are all sold at our cost. Left hand side is all free literature, issues specific stuff over there. If you have any questions about any of that, you can talk to Paul or anybody with a placard on and we'll help you with that. Our special announcement gal, Freya. Hey everybody, I'm a grateful believer, struggles with codependency and depression. My name is Freya. How's it everybody going? Um, good to be here. And um, so the announcements that we have this week, um, men's step study is starting soon. It is starting next week, February 4th. That's a Thursday night, and um, it'll be with Mike and Tim. You guys wave your hands back there in the back. So see them. It's going to be from 6 to 8 Thursday nights. They're still finding out which room, but it'll be somewhere here at the church. And uh, so join them. That'll be great. And um, women's step study, see either me or Tammy. Tammy, raise your hand. And uh, we're still setting up the next one. So, um, and maybe soon. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Freya. Okay. So now, um, speaking of Mike and Tim, we have the uh, Mike and Tim show. My readers for tonight. It's just a shame to cover up something this pretty. Shut up. Here, hold me. <laughs> I'm a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who struggles with anger and self-medication. My name is Mike. My name is Tim. I'm a faithful believer in Jesus Christ, struggle with alcoholism, drug addiction, and Mike. <laughs> I have feelings. Step one, we have admitted that we were powerless over our addictions and compulsive behaviors that our lives had become unmanageable. I know that nothing good lives in me. That is in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Romans 7, 18. Step two. We came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. For it is God who works in you and will, in, works in you and, will and act according to his good purpose. Philippians 2, 13. That wasn't that smooth. But you guys get the idea, right? Step three, we made the decision to turn our lives and our wills over to the care of God. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing. That is your spiritual worship, Romans 12, 1. Step four, we made a searching and fearless moral inventory of our lives. Let us examine our ways and test them, and let us return to the Lord, Lamentations 3:40. Step five, we admitted to God, to ourselves, and to another human being the exact natures of our wrongs. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another 
so that you may be healed. James 5, 16. Step six, we were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. Humble yourself before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Oh. Mike. Step seven, we humbly ask him to remove all our shortcomings. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Step eight, we made a list of all persons we have harmed and became willing to make amends to all of them. I'm waiting. Do to others as you would have them do to you. 6, 3, 31. We should not do this together. Mm. Step nine, we made direct amends to such people whenever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. I'm still waiting. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, there remember your brother has something against you, leave your gift at the altar. First go and be reconciled with your brother. Then come and offer your gift, Mike. I'm sorry, Matthew 5, 23, 24. Step 10, we continue to take personal inventory, and when we, we were wrong, promptly admit it. So if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you do not fall. 1 Corinthians 10, 12. Oh, here's the rough one. Step 11, we sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. That the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Colossians 3.16. Step 12. Having had a spiritual experience as a result of these steps, we tried to carry the message to others and practice these principles in all our affairs. Brothers, if someone is caught in sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourselves, or you may also be tempted. Galatians 6.1. Through God's grace, lasting change is possible. How y'all doing this evening? I can't hear you. There you go. <laughs> Would y'all stand, please stand and join me in the Lord's Prayer. Start this off. Who is it that helps us with our hurts, hangups, and addictions? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. That's right, Bill. Good evening. I'm a Christian in recovery from alcohol, and my name is Mark. I was born to Christian parents, Sarasota, Florida. Neither parent was an avid drinker or a user of any substance of any kind. We attended a Baptist church when I was young, sometime between the years of five and seven. My parents' relationship descended into chaos and eventually ended in divorce. Unbeknownst to them, I bore the weight of this chaos and separation and blamed myself for the divorce like a five and seven year old can really be blamed for a divorce, right? Well, because of this, isolation, manipulation, lying, anger, and acting out became my weapons of choice, if you will. My father remarried to my stepmother, who was Catholic. One week I'd attend Baptist service, another week I would attend Catholic service. I mean, I was so confused, I went up to stand up and pray, and we were supposed to be kneeling on the bench. I was neither Catholic nor Baptist. It's like Ray Stevens said, I was Captist. So, but this confusion ultimately kind of pushed me away from God and the church and anything that had to do with religion, if you will. So throughout the years, in high school, I wasn't in the, with the partying crowd as much as I wasn't the mischievous crowd. However, the times I did drink, I got drunk. I never admitted anything was my responsibility. This is what I would call the, or what I would come to call the but-ifs and the what-ifs, leading to my resentments. You know, 
we wouldn't have caught, got caught in that stolen car if the guy driving hadn't driven through a neighborhood at 2 o'clock in the morning with the base pumped up. It wasn't my fault that it was stolen. I was just riding in it. So I did a lot of justification throughout that process, throughout that time of my life. Uh, these ifs would rear something more sinister later in life. At the age of 17, I entered the United States Marine Corps. During my military career, alcohol led to several disciplinary actions against me. Go figure, right? I met my wife, Linda, in my last year in the Corps. When I was discharged from the military, I moved in with Linda, who was residing here in Lee County. I had started a job as an electrical apprentice. Linda had a son, Damon, and on March 27, 1998, Linda became my wife and Damon my son. While on the job one day at the, as an electrician, there was a fight that broke out uh, between two gentlemen, a carpenter and a carpenter. I'm sorry to say that five times fast, carpenter, carpenter. And one of them pulled a knife. I was able to subdue the one with the knife. And when the deputies were there, the deputies, one of the deputies said to me, why don't you try out the academy? Okay, never thought of it. So I did. I now had two children, a wife, and I was embarking on a brand new demanding career. I was coaching Little League and worked every hour I could to provide for our family. Throughout these years, life happened as it does with everybody. I saw some pretty nasty stuff in my career, both in dealing with society and dealing with the department itself. I took all those negative feelings, especially the anger, and pushed it down, telling myself I could use it as fuel to stay alive. It's kind of weird what we do come home at the end of the day. And I began to drink to forget about my day, to forget about what was going on in my life, both personally and professionally. These were just some of the many justifications I used in my mind to justify my drinking. Never mind that I was isolating on the porch as my family ate, not even 20 feet away from me. I could see them through the sliding glass door, and I'm on the porch drinking beer. And in my sick mind, I'm thinking, oh, they're ungrateful. How dare they eat without me? You know? as I sit out there and isolate and make myself angry. This is really how sick my thinking had become. When things were going good, I would accuse my wife of cheating on me just so I could make myself angry enough to go drink. Because if I could make myself angry enough, that anger would drive me right to the store. I mean, come on, I wasn't the same guy I just took to Southwest Florida Addiction Services. I wasn't the lady I drove to the ER because she just overdosed and the ambulance was too far away. I wasn't them. I deserved my beer because of them. Pretty sick, right? I attempted tr traditional recovery programs on my own for the first time in 2007. I say attempted because the only thing I did was show up and then proceed to watch the clock and then leave once the hour's gone. I mean, 59 minutes and I was hoofing it out the door. I, you know, had that, uh, like my sponsor said, instead of taking the cotton out of my ears and sticking it in my mouth, I had the cotton in my ears and was watching my watch. And I also attempted therapists and psychologists to no avail. One night, the ifs came not by single spies, but in battalions, as I proceeded to drink myself into oblivion after dealing with some issues with my department. At one point, my department was called because my family was concerned, as anybody would be. I had a call. After several hours, my department called me on the phone, and I responded to them with several four-letter expletives and vulgarities and, what, and whatnot. I remember being told, no, oh, just unload your weapons, we'll come talk to you. I'm, okay. So being the belligerent drunk I had become, I proceeded to my bedroom, retrieved one of my firearms, and then discharged my firearm from my porch into the ground. Yeah, it was pretty funny. I was so inebriated, I had no clue deputies had already started to come around my house. I eventually came out front and was subdued by my own SWAT team and taken into custody. Eventually, I bonded out of jail, or was bonded out of jail. Even after being released, my drinking did not stop. I knew I needed to do something, and I needed to keep busy. So in an attempt to stop drinking and keep busy, I no, I needed to do something. I had no job. I couldn't go back to what I was doing, obviously. So having been a machine gunner in the Marine Corps, as you saw, and then in law enforcement for eight, almost 18 years, I decided to keep the natural order of things, and so I made the most log logical choice. I went to beauty school. <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be a joke. 
Over the next year and a half, I made attempts at sobriety. After relapsing on March 22nd, 2018, I found myself back in custody for violating my probation for drinking. Yeah, go figure. I couldn't fathom what had happened, and I was utterly defeated. <coughs> Excuse me. I was speaking with a fellow inmate in the next cell because, you know, because of my previous job, I was not allowed in what they would call general population. I spoke how I couldn't even get a big book while I was in here in the jail. And this inmate, um, pay attention to this because you know how God puts people in your lives. This inmate said, I don't have a big book, but I've got this recovery Bible. Do you want it? Yeah. I, I said yes. And I honestly didn't even hear him say recovery Bible or the word recovery when he asked me. I knew I needed something to read and Bible was about the best answer I could come up with at the time. And it was a Celebrate Recovery Bible. And a voice in my head told me, just start reading this book as you did with the big book, from front to back. So I did, I started at the copyright page and worked my way through that complete Bible word for word. See, I needed to get busy, but I had to get busy with my recovery. And I got busy with my sobriety, even though my circumstances at, the, at that particular time weren't favorable. But I wasn't just going to sit on my behind and do nothing. I was done living like that. I learned some things about Christ and how his grace is given to me by his death on the cross. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 2 through 4. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I have preached to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. In prayer, I asked Jesus Christ in my heart. I had taken that next step. And immediately when I did so, I felt a weight lifted not only from my shoulders, but from my heart as well. The room brightened, it became brighter in there, it got warmer. And more importantly, I felt a peace I had not felt since my parents' divorce. Mind you, when this was happening, I was 42 years old. That happened when I was between five and seven years old. Working the steps taught me true surrender through acceptance and forgiveness. There was a reason I opened the, with the Lord's Prayer tonight. And the reason was because I was unwilling to forgive trespass, trespasses against me. Whether I did it, you did it, or she did it, he did it, it didn't matter. I had to deal with these trespasses. That was part of my vicious cycle of anger and dealing with resentments, which would lead to drinking. Learning his word also taught me how to let go and let him. And I learned I couldn't forgive anyone else if I wasn't willing to forgive myself. When I was starting to become discouraged at my circumstances, I had but to remember this one passage in the Gospel of Mark. Go figure again. <laughs> Chapter 4, verses 39 through 40, and I still will say this in my head throughout my day. He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and was completely calm. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still not have faith? Reading this would reaffirm my faith in him. See, I was brand new at this whole th thing with Christ in my heart and everything, and he knew it, and I would pray that. And forgive me, I'm new at this. He knew, he knew it all. Immediately upon release, I attended my tr traditional recovery programs and meetings. Some of my recovery programs were held at Grace Church in the at the Fort Myers Shores campus. The, be the best one, there you go. Nothing like healthy competition. <laughs> I renewed old acquaintances and friendships and learned of the Choose Repro Recovery program within Grace Church from my friend Champ. See, Champ and I came into recovery together. Although, and I'll bet, it, I still had a little bit of research to do before I committed to mine. <laughs> I was no longer holding on to those resentments or the ifs from my life. Having this new freedom from within allowed me to do things I had never done. I became involved in my program of recovery. Instead of sitting there and watching that clock and counting down, I got busy with it. I first started getting involved by finding a sponsor. Although my first sponsor was temporary, I still had one. If you don't have a sponsor, or at least a temporary one, get one. There's a reason they put that in the, five, the first five things up there, get one, even if it is a temporary one. 
I had to work the steps by myself while I was in jail because of my circumstances. Nothing was going to keep me from recovering. My sponsor and I worked them again. When I speak to my sponsor, inevitably the conversation will lead to working a step. I have started working the steps again with a gentleman that I sponsor now. If you think you don't need a sponsor and want to sponsor yourself, you've got a maroon for a sponsor. And that was for all you Bugs Bunny fans, if anybody got that. Get phone numbers from within your recovery community. Use these numbers. I can't tell you how many times I've had to call someone, either whether it was to vent, get held accountable on my own stuff, or just say hello and check on somebody. That old cliche, there is no I in team, is so spot on when it comes to recovery. Yeah, you'll get the one smart aleck to say, oh, there's no I in team, but there's a me. Well, yeah, there is if you're dyslexic. I could go on with the cliches about teamwork. <laughs> Bottom line is we can't do this alone. I couldn't do this alone. If I could, I wouldn't be standing up here talking to you all tonight. As I mentioned before, I have this new peace and freedom, which has given me a new courage. Not courage like I needed in the military or in law enforcement. However, courage in mending my relationships. One thing that I cowered away from. I have a relationship with my brother now that I thought was lost forever. He and I talk on the phone and can have a conversation. Yeah, he still gives me a heck about doing perms, but hey, what are you gonna do? <laughs> I have a relationship with my family. I used, the ones I used to watch and eat dinner every night without me. My sons and I have a relationship now where we can interact and be a family. They can rely on me to do things that I said I'm gonna do. And my relationship with my wife is better than it has ever been. And she's sitting right down there. I love you. Not only has my wife stuck by me through this whole gambit of stuff, she supports me and she herself has decided to come to Choose Recovery to work on her hurts and hangups. And she attends regularly. Like I said before, I became a cosmetologist. I also became a dual license as a barber. Oh, and if you ever want a humbling in life, go back to school at 42 years old and see what your classmates are when they're all, <laughs> just saying. And when you're the only male in there and you're known as the old man in the group. <laughs> but I found, with Christ's guidance, I found a family oriented Christian salon barber shop. Yes, it does exist. I work with some of the biggest hearts in the business. And the other day, now about two weeks ago, the other day I was performing a straight razor shave on a client, a new client. I'd never met him before. And our conversation at one point turned to the subject of recovery. He had just gotten out of detox that morning, and his mom brought him in. And we got to talking, and he told me that his girlfriend is awaiting open heart surgery at Lee Memorial due to her addiction, stemming from her addiction. And for the very first time in my life, I felt the need to pray for and with a complete stranger. Yeah. I had never done that before in my life. Thank you. I immediately stopped shaving and said, can I pray for you and your girlfriend with you? And we did so. And after praying, I felt like this young man and woman truly have a great chance. And then I began to tell him about the Choose Recovery Program, which he had said he'd heard about it. I told him where we were at, our different campuses, and I invited him to our church out there in Fort Myers Shores because he lives in our area. My program of recovery consists of God, family, church, and traditional recovery programs. And I still have to deal with life on life's terms. However, with Christ, it is so much easier. It can't, again, get a sponsor, use those numbers, get involved. I mean, I'm on a leadership team at the church. I cook every Sunday. And by the way, sorry, Central and great, uh, Cape Coral, but we have the better breakfast on Sunday. Yeah. Just saying. You have to come out and try it, Pastor. <laughs> Is it biscuits and gravy this Sunday? <laughs> and with this, thank you, you all. Um, I'm going to close with this. I'm not perfect, but Christ is. God and I are still working on me. I still fall down with a large thump. But with my Savior's help, I can get up, brush myself off, and try again. By offering forgiveness, I can't change my past, but I most definitely can brighten my future. Thank you all.
right, what an awesome story. <clears throat> okay, so once again, any newcomers here, we just welcome you and um, we would meet you over here if you are a newcomer and uh, talk to you more about what we are and what we are not here at Celebrate Recovery. And uh, so if you're a newcomer, after we break, after our serenity prayer, just kind of wander over in the overflow room here and we will have some people meet with you and, and uh, talk with you. So we will now end with a serenity prayer. Dave's going to pop that up on our screen, and we're going to start that um, right after a word of silence, and here we go. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Okay, thank you. We're going to break to our small groups and be back here at 8 o'clock.